I'm here to talk about something very dear to my heart and something that I couldn't imagine my life without. It is something beautiful, staggering, tremendously humbling, and incomprehensibly complex. I have an uncompromising, insatiable, ridiculous love for it, and it is one of my goals in life to help decipher a little bit about humanity's place within it. It is known as the void, the cosmos, the heavens, and the universe. My passion is space. My love for the ether began before I can remember. As a child, I dreamt about space and astronauts and the rockets that would take them across the solar system. Yet as I grew older, those dreams became more grounded in reality. Fortunately, last year, I was able to once again chase down those childhood dreams. In October, YouTube partnered with NASA to host YouTube Space Lab, which was an international competition asking anyone 14 to 18 to submit an idea for an experiment to be performed on the International Space Station. I aspire to design life support systems for long duration space travel, which is an extremely niche area called bioastronautics. This competition was my chance to pursue research in an area that to this day fascinates me and can sometimes keep me up at night. That is why I decided to enter. So for the next month or so, I was scrawling ideas in my little blue notebook during the day and I was researching them at night. And because I was so committed to my dream, I wanted to find something no one had ever thought of before. I wanted to design the most groundbreaking experiment, one that the judges couldn't afford to reject. I then decided to spend my time researching, but it was really difficult because I had realized that <laughs> there are experts on this subject, what can I do? I was astonished to find that, yes, I could find something that hadn't been considered before. But to a 16-year-old, not even out of high school, I was incredulous. Who did I think that I was? So in order for me to understand my idea, I drew a parallel to something we all might know. Every time you spend a long period on a plane, the blood begins to pool in your legs and travel slower around your body. This thickened blood then coagulates and creates larger clots, and those larger clots can inhibit blood flow, causing common yet sometimes deadly conditions such as deep vein thrombosis and even embolisms. I then thought about the similarities between the ISS and a plane. What similarities though? These two seem so manifestly different because in one there's microgravity and then in the other we can stand on our own two feet. I then thought, what if the presence of gravity actually has no effect on the thickness of blood? Astronauts can move around without considerable effort, so they spend most of their time essentially immobile. So, what if it's actually the immobility that causes this difference? What if it's the immobility and the time that they spend in microgravity that has a relationship to the thickness of blood and by extension the size of their clots? That was my idea. To me, it made no sense why scientists who study this as their profession hadn't considered this possibility. The consequences seem grave. Imagine a six month mission to Mars and on the way, one of your astronauts suffers from a pulmonary embolism and dies. What do we do? We can do nothing though really because we've overlooked a really simple idea and we've cost millions of dollars and more importantly, we've lost a life. So I decide on my idea, I filmed my entry, and I submitted it in mid-December. Oh, a little side note, I didn't actually just do one, I did three, classic IB student. I did another in muscle cells and the steroid nandrolone, and another in magnetotatic bacteria. Nonetheless, after all of this ridiculous work, I was exhausted, stressed, and tired, and I had no idea how it would turn out. But I did it for the right reasons. I did it because I wanted to learn more about space and I wanted to contribute in my own little way to the scientific community. I also just wanted to push myself and grow as a person. Certainly I'm very proud. On January 17th, I was informed that I was selected as a finalist. Out of over 2,000 entries, mine was chosen as one of nine in the Americas region in the 14 to 16 age category. 
it was and still is a tremendous honor. You may be wondering, well, which one got chosen? You can probably guess, though, it was the blood clotting one. Nonetheless, it was an experience that I can actually still remember to this day as a time where I could feel my dreams coming together. What I really learned from this, though, is how desperately little we actually know about space and how to survive in it. This is both utterly enthralling and terrifying. So what about all this time and money we put into something with supposed little return? Why does this matter? Why should we care? We have so many other problems that we should be solving on Earth first, right? Wrong. There are problems with this argument because space actually positively benefits us considerably. Firstly, the exploration and study of space has given us some of our most important technologies. The microchip is a descendant of the integrated circuits found in the Apollo capsules in the 60s and 70s. That one piece of equipment generated by the space program has given us some of our most incredible technologies and revolutionized the world. How did we build it? Because we invested in space. Because we invested in those scientists, technicians, engineers, and mathematicians to design a spacecraft. And they brought back medical imaging, prosthetic limb technology, LEDs, water purification, and many more. But not only does the money we put into space give us some of our most important technologies, the money comes back too. Statistics have shown that for every $1 put into Apollo, 14 came back into the US economy. So it's a smart financial move too. But again, why should we care? Space addresses our technological, economic, and emotional needs. Emotionally, space caters to our most innate human curiosity to learn at its most fundamental level. Space is the origin of life itself, and it houses some of the most astounding natural phenomena. Scientists have tapped into this for centuries and given us some of the most momentous insight into the universe. We know what the planets are like, we know what the galaxy is like, but we don't yet know our place in it, and that is our job now. More importantly, our job now is to understand where we stand in the universe and what we can do as a species to better ourselves within it. One of my idols, Carl Sagan, famously said, we are made of star stuff. We are composed of the universe and are entirely results of its wonderful workings, but there's more to it than that. We have a responsibility to ourselves as a species to push our boundaries and expand our existence because we can. And historically, we've been doing just that. From Columbus to the Voyager 1 satellite, which is the furthest any man-made object has ever been, humanity must continue to explore space. But in order for this quest to be realized, we need the interest. And so far, we don't have the eyes and ears of the ones that we need, which is the youth. So I want kids to know that there is room for experimentation and research, and not everything has been done. Competitions like YouTube Space Lab, the Canadian Science Challenge, and the Google Science Fair are perfect ways to stimulate the drive for science. It's not about competing, though. It's about the science that comes out of it. There will always be room, no, there will always be need for those groundbreaking ideas and the ones that are too crazy to consider. We need the fresh ideas from the new faces, because if a 16-year-old can find a hole in your research, there's much to be done. What I hope to have done today is to give you a little insight into my life and how that has changed my understanding of space and what those unknowns mean. We must invest in space because it is technologically, economically, and psychologically fulfilling. We must invest in space because it is the most profound goal of a developing species. We must invest in space because it can inspire and fascinate any child 20 adults if you just give them a telescope and tell them to search the skies. Teach them about the stars, and they'll remember it, just like I do. We must cultivate within our youth that fire and that curiosity for the unknown, and teach them to salivate at the sound of a new idea. There are too many things we don't yet know to stop looking up. Thank you.